I'm Lon Morris, district manager of the Hollywood Social Security Office. The golden age of comedy and motion pictures ran from about 1912 to 1932. When you see this, <laughs> and hear the sound of laughter, you will recognize one of the world's great comedians, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Harold, welcome to Social Security in Action. Thank you very much, Lon. It's a pleasure, really, to be here. Well, it's certainly a privilege for us to have you here today. Thank you. Harold, uh, a few months ago, one of the uh, silent movies you made uh, over 40 years ago was shown in Hollywood. And as I understand it, the uh, tickets were sold out immediately. And uh, when the movie was over, the audience applauded. Has comedy changed in the last 40 years? Oh, my, yes. It's uh, tremendously so. You see, uh, uh, it was so visual in those days. And we had to rely upon, especially in comedy, upon mime, pantomime. And, uh, and uh, today, of course, comedy is supplemented with dialogue and it really goes past that in fact it's about 80 percent or more than that even dialogue so it's changed the whole procedure of way the comedians worked in my day and uh, the way they work today mm -hmm. well you think the event of sound actually changed uh, comedy oh changed everything in the mm -hmm. motion picture mm -hmm. industry and very much so comedy it didn't necessarily do what a lot of them thought it uh, it thought it killed the uh, silent uh, uh, comedy picture. Well, that was not true. It, uh, it supplemented it. They, at first, they just had to get used to blending the two. And uh, some, of the, uh, some of the different comedians were not used to talking, and they had to readjust their voices. They had to find out voice placement and uh, uh, find out uh, that they shouldn't be talking all the time. But it did change it to mostly the comedy was quips and verbal, uh, verbal type of comedy rather than the action and the gags, which mm -hmm. is uh, comedy business. Oh, yes. We have some scenes here today that I think are really classics. Now, for example, uh, here's a picture of the end of one of your uh, wild chases. H how were these chases done? Well, the chases really were actually done right down on the streets. If we were, uh -huh. if we were driving a car like this and missing uh, street cars and pedestrians. We actually were doing that. We were right on the street doing it. Of course, we had, we had many policemen uh, that we were in our service that were blocking off traffic, and we had our own traffic. We had our own pedestrians. Uh -huh. But nevertheless, we were going right down the main street, and we were going fast. You couldn't go too slow. We couldn't undercrank too much, uh -huh. because if you did, it made the action of the people walking. It made them uh, uh, not natural. It was abnormal. Oh, yes. uh -huh. Uh, weren't these dangerous? But, uh, oh, the chases were very dangerous, yes. lots of them, and, uh, but they were real. They, uh, of course, today, most of it is uh, done with process. But even then, right now in process, the cameraman has to take a chance. Somebody's got to go down that, that lane and, uh, and get something well, for... Excuse go me, ahead. what do you mean by process? I, I don't follow you. Well, probably uh, process is a screen... Uh, where they take the picture and it's uh, like a rear projection, and oh, then they yes. and they take and put your your actors or actresses, your characters, mm -hmm. in front of this screen. And in other words, we put an automobile in front of the screen, and uh, uh, the action is on the screen in the back, and looks like you're riding right down Broadway in New York, where you're taking it in the studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the whole process is uh, is used all the time. Oh, but yeah. we didn't have process in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, if we did have had any form of it, it was so lacking in perfection that it uh, we used it very little yes here's another scene that i'm sure many people will recognize you made uh, many thrill comedies one in which you climbed uh, tall buildings now in this picture uh, was this trick photography or uh, no here again this was actually up just as high as as you see it uh, the people were under us at the time that we did it of course i wasn't uh, crazy enough to want to get out there and commit suicide so i did have uh, platforms <laughs> Uh, built a long ways below me, uh, oh. oh, probably about 16 feet or something like that below, so that the camera could shoot down. But uh, there was no railings around it. We piled mattresses on it, and uh, if you let, you had to light uh, flat. You could bounce off you of it, and then there wouldn't say. be much need for the platform. But yeah. uh, uh, these pictures had a great impact. The funny part of it is this: this one here with the big clock, we call it safety last, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I would say out of, oh, maybe around 300 pictures that I made, only five of them were up on, uh, on sides of buildings. But the impact evidently was so uh, strong 
<laughs> I'm almost remembered as a thrill comedian today. <laughs> you know, I was telling you before the show that I thought yeah. I should shoot, sue you because I'm afraid of high places and uh, have been since I saw your comedy. And I mentioned to you that I'm, I'm afraid of height too, you know. <laughs> when I'd start one of these pictures, it'd take me about two days to get uh, adjusted. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do hardly anything the first two days. Then the trouble was you'd get overconfident, mm -hmm. like on a sledge up here after I'd been working on it a week. It took so long time because we could only work right around from about 11 o'clock till 1 o'clock because shadows would come across the mm -hmm. street. So you had, But I would get so confident that I'd walk clear out past where the, where the uh, platform was. Oh, yes. And, uh, of course, mm -hmm. that always annoyed the cameraman, the different ones back there, because uh, I felt I knew what I was doing, but sure. uh, they didn't. <laughs> Here's another picture uh, which uh, certainly portrays some danger. Uh, how did you come upon the mm -hmm. idea that danger could be funny? Well, now, there, here, we had done it for a long time. Hal Roach was the one that uh, uh, that I worked for first was our producer, and later I went in for myself, and Hal went on and and had many pursuits of his own. But he uh, he was responsible for our doing them to start with. And uh, But I'll tell you how, uh, how one of them, this one that I showed with the clock, mm -hmm. uh, I was walking up 7th Street, and I, uh, around about 7th and uh, on 7th Street, uh, Round Hill, a little past Hill, where the Brockman building is. Mm -hmm. And there was a tremendous crowd there, maybe two or three hundred people or more. And I inquired what was going on. They said, uh, a man's going to scale this building. And I said, really? So I stood around, and uh, sure enough, they came in. They had a ceremony. They introduced him, and he started climbing. And he got about three floors, and I couldn't stand it anymore. I, I knew, just knew he was going to be killed. So I walked on up the street. And I didn't want to leave. I, if anything happened, I was going to be there to see what it was all about. And so I went around the corner where I couldn't see him. And I, peeled. lots of people were up there too. And I said, "Where is he now?" I said, "Oh, he's about the fifth floor." Really? And then I'd peek around. Sure, he was. And uh, no ledges on. He was climbing from window to window. And uh, uh, so I, uh, I peeked around and waited until he finally got to the top. Then he got a bicycle, rode it on the edge of the building, finished that. Flagpole right in the, right on the on the edge, in this uh, on the corner, and he crawled up the flagpole. It was a short one. Stood on top of his head, Gee. and of course the th crowd were absolutely thrilled, and it had such a, a reaction on this group of people and on myself that I said, well now, if it can have that and you do it properly on the screen, it should have the same results. So I went back, went up there, on the roof, met the young man, and. Had him come out to the studio and see Hal Roach and myself, and uh, so we hired him. Uh -huh. And then we wrote this other one. The funny part is that about about two weeks before we start, he'd asked me to uh, use a uh, if he could climb a little three-story building like out in Glendale, and so we gave him permission. We thought climb a 12-story building, three would be easier. And he slipped on the first floor, oh, great. fell, mm -hmm. broke his leg, could have been killed. Oh, sure. And of course, he held us up for about three or four weeks afterwards on things, so we finally decided to start, and we called him Limpy Bill, because oh, that's what he was. I should bet so. and He's in the picture. With Harold, I know you're quite interested in the Shrine Hospitals. Could you tell us just a little bit about them? Oh, I'd be very happy to, Lon. I've been uh, associated with that uh, activity for many years now, oh, 15, 20 years. We have, I'm talking about we, the Shrine of North America, mm -hmm and uh, about 20 hospitals. We had 17 for many years. Now we've had three more to it, and I'll tell you about those two. But this, uh, this organization of ours uh, has been either curing crippled children or aiding them materially. And we have cured uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of crippled children. And it's all done 100% charitable and completely without regard to race, creed, or color. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Shrine, of course, at first financed this themselves entirely, and still do, but so many people found out what great altruism it uh, has been, and that all the money that comes into the Shrine is used for that particular purpose, that mm, so many people now have left wills and bequests and gifts to, yes. to our uh, Shriners Hospitals for Crippled Children, that it's, uh, it now has been able to build three more hospitals that are going to take care of, of children with burns. Oh, yes. And uh, that is something that has been very neglected mm -hmm. in, uh, I don't mean that they don't take care of a patient, but as far as the research on burns, uh, they don't know nearly as much about it as they should know. And the Shrine is going in for that research 
and also uh, uh, keep on curing uh, burn patients. And we're joining up with big universities like the, uh, like Harvard in Boston, uh, another big university in Cincinnati, and another one down in uh, Texas, in Galveston. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's magnificent uh, philanthropy. It certainly is. Yes. And really I would certainly wish we had more time to just talk about it, I but our you. time is up. Thank it you. It has Mom. been a real, real privilege having you with us here today. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. And remember, if you have questions about your Social Security, see your own Social Security office soon.